Good morning and welcome to our service on Sunday the 11th of September 2022. Today we will take a different tack for our worship service this morning in <coughs> response to the news of the death of our Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. This happened on Thursday, so only a couple of days ago, so it seemed appropriate to abandon the plans I had for this morning's service and focus on um, the life of our Queen and our prayers for her and for her family. As usual, there's a um, on the website and the Facebook page, there's a link to a YouTube playlist which has some music on that goes with this morning's service. And amongst the songs there, there are two Taze chants, which you might find useful to have on in the background while you take a, perhaps a time of quiet prayer. Um, but that's entirely up to you. So let's begin in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet she shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And that's a short passage from John chapter 11, which is quite often quoted at funeral services. And so we continue in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth II. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and the nations of the Commonwealth, for her grace, dignity and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth and strength of her Christian faith and the witness she bore to it in the word and in deed. Accept our thanks and praise, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to take a short passage from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the major prophets in the Old Testament and he had a vision of God in the temple. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. This year will probably in the future be known as the year that Queen Elizabeth died. And whatever we think about the institution of the monarchy, the death of our Queen has a huge impact on us. Her face, her presence, her being there have been a part of all our lives for so many years. For most of us, she's been the only monarch we can remember. She's been part of our lives 
our imaginations, our sense of who we are. The writer of this Bible passage from the book of Isaiah shared this experience of the death of a monarch after a reign of many years. And it's probably no coincidence that it was in this year, the year that King Uzziah died, that he had an experience of the ground shaking beneath him when the temple shook and he felt lost. Many of us now will also feel dislocated, shaken up, in ways we can't describe and perhaps hadn't even expected. We see on the news and the TV and in magazines and on social media, anyone who's anyone is putting up a statement of what Queen Elizabeth meant to each of them and to us as the nation. For the monarch whose reign has just ended in our land will be the first to say that the God she worshipped and to whom she committed her life in service, the God in whose name she was anointed, this holy God is with us and the whole earth is filled with God's glory. There are those who would say that what she provided above all was a kind of stability and a reassurance. <coughs> When times were painful and difficult for us as a nation, she was there. She always sought to comfort the suffering and steady the anxious. And above all, her own faith in God was a sure and strong thing. She spoke with increasing depth as the years went by in her many Christian broad Christmas sorry Christmas broadcasts about her own reliance on God. And in the face of her death, we can depend on the God who is always with us, filling not only the temples of this world, but also our families and communities with love and hope. In the year that Queen Elizabeth died, we give thanks for a life of dedicated service to our nations and to the Commonwealth. We give thanks for God's faithful servant and we pray for her family and her closest friends who will mourn and miss her the most. We grieve for all we've lost, um, but yet we also take hope and heart from the faith that we share with her and that she shared with us, remembering that death is defeated and that God reigns above all. And yet, as we mourn her passing, we know that life for us doesn't end there. It goes on. Life will change, but it will continue. And we must give thanks for our new monarch, King Charles III, who's already in place, awaiting his formal coronation, yet ready to take up the reins and carry on the work on our behalf. And we must pray for him as he seeks to balance the private grief of the loss of his mother with the demands of his public role as monarch of our country and a figurehead within the Commonwealth nations. And we must also pray for all those members of her family who must also handle their own private grief for the loss of a mother, grandmother and aunt and so on alongside public roles and responsibilities of various sorts and for the care and support of those around them during this difficult time of private and public grief. But let's also remind ourselves of the revelation given to John about the future of our world and all that's in it. And let's look for a moment in Revelation. The Revelation of John, the last book in the Bible. And I'm going to read from the almost last chapter. So I'm reading from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And as I saw the holy city, 
the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Let's remember that God's kingdom will come in all its fullness and glory and heaven and earth will be one. And the new Jerusalem will be the church of God in its new and perfect state. Let's remember that although the world as we know it is fragile and constantly at risk of man's greed and selfishness, it will become the kingdom of God. And we must continue to play our part in working to make that happen in whatever way we can, through the strength and the guidance of our faithful God. So let's continue in prayer. O God, our rock and our redeemer, we come to worship you and to give thanks for your servant Elizabeth. We thank you for her long life and her dedicated service to the Commonwealth and the nations. We thank you for what she's meant to each one of us. Maybe we treasure memories of meeting her, of celebrating and marking moments in her life with parties and celebrations, of the opening of Parliament, of her presence at significant times in our history, and of her speaking to us on radio and television. We rejoice that she lived and shared the faith we hold, and that she followed her vocation, hearing the call to serve. We pray for those who will miss her most deeply, that they may find comfort and hope. We celebrate and affirm our faith that death is defeated, that new life awaits your children, and that creation is renewed in Christ. We pray for our nations at a time of change, and for our new king. May he follow his mother in faithful service. And may your blessing rest on him. We pray too for our elected representatives in Parliament, for our public servants and for all citizens of all faiths and none. And in this day and time we pray, as we are always glad to pray, May your kingdom come. Amen. And so may the infinite love and mercy of God bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of God's eternal kingdom. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. May God bless you all.